Hey, yo, it's the good. It's your boy, Super Kev. Welcome to another episode of Super Kev Livecast. You already know what it is. I've been up since since that verse. You already know what it is. So I am a little tired. But what I wanted to do was do a quick episode. And I can almost promise this will be quick. Only because I owe y'all another episode. So I'm going to try to just go through this one. And then I'll take longer later when I got more time. But then I definitely want to show up on YouTube. And we're going to talk about that versus, all right? We're going to do that on YouTube. So those of you who are interested, we'll do that after we do this. Now, let me get through this quick so I can get to that because that one's going to be a little fun. Um, But we do what we have to do before we do what we want to do. So what I want to share with y'all is we're going to do the same thing, go through the to-do list. But I want to um share with y'all from a perspective of the next day right because usually i tell y'all what i'm going to do let's review what was supposed to happen all right so i kind of like this today um so i wrote is it episode 19 yeah episode 19 is correct but it's not december 2nd anymore it's not bone thugs and harmony appreciation day it's the day after um but i'm gonna leave it as december 2nd because this is the december 2nd list all right, and because of that, we're going to sneak in Income 4 on the fifth day. And remember, Income 4 is dividend income. So that is where you invest in a company and they pay you for um, having shares in their company. And then the better they do, usually, the better they pay. I say usually because, you know, it depends on the situation. Now, what I wrote down was some things I wanted to um have you guys think about, all right? And then you can do your own research with your family and figure out what's the best for you. But some stocks to consider, all right? I'm straight up give you some answers, but I'm not a certified public accountant. I'm just a nigga. Um, if you understand about the metaverse, I'm a gamer, so I'm huge in the metaverse. Um, I, I trust that the metaverse is going to get a whole lot of people, a whole lot of money. So... Some metaverse stocks to consider. Facebook, whatever they, whatever the heck they change their name into, consider that. Uh, hold on, let me try to do this quick. I was about to elaborate. Now let's do this quick. Roblox. I don't um, know what Roblox is, but I know it's something that my son knows about. There you go. That's good enough. But inside of the Roblox, I heard is going to be. Let me skip to it. Nike Land. So Nike is already a part of this metaverse business. You, that's a stock you might want to consider. I do believe they give a dividend. Um, NVIDIA, shout out to my older brother who was raving about them last year. Um, I, shout out to whatever article put me on last year. Um, I'd be in and out of NVIDIA. Um, but at this point, I'm considering taking a long-term position because I trust their development in the video game industry. And again, I'm a big gamer, so that's why I have a a bias towards video game stocks because I feel very confident when I'm talking or reading about video games. I, I've been playing games my whole life. Um, it's one of the things that keeps me calm when I'm very upset. I like to play Street Fighter. Um, and ever since I was little, and it's kind of funny, right? Like my mom, she used to be like, oh, you play games too much. You play so much games. Pull up on her right now. What's she doing on her phone? Probably playing a game. <laughs> she's just a little late to the party, but games are lit. Not only are games lit, they're not going anywhere. So if you understand that they're not going anywhere and we're entering this virtual reality world, then metaverse is definitely a sector you should consider in your portfolio. I'm not a certified public accountant. Please, please take this back to your accounting people and don't buy some just because I said buy it. And as a matter of fact, don't you dare buy anything I say unless you have an entry, take profit, stop loss. Don't you dare say, oh, Super Kev recommended it. I, I'd be on my entries and stop loss, take profits, two to one risk reward ratio. Don't don't use my name if you ain't going to use it right. But anyway, let's keep it positive. Everything positive today. Um, another stock that's related to um, Metaverse is Unity. And I don't know how I found out about it. But then it was recommended again yesterday. So I'm extremely bullish on Unity. Um, Next sector is, and I broke this down in a way that I would personally do it. Do I do this already? All right. Let me tell you why I don't remember what I be doing. I run multiple accounts. 
So sometimes I'll buy these long term. Sometimes I'll trade like I'll buy them and then get out. So I just be confused as to where I bought it. But the purpose of buying them is consistent. Now, watch this. This is a great way to learn the stock market for those of you entry level people trying to understand how it works. So let's say we have another sector a sector. The word sec means like cut, I guess. Um, so sector is. Actually, I think the example will make it easier to understand. The first sector I named was metaverse. Then you would find all the stocks that fit in the metaverse um, category, and then you make your decisions, right? Another category is electric vehicles. So let's say EV is your sector that you say, you know what? I love cars, and I know electric cars is the future because um, California can't sell brand new gasoline vehicles after 2035. So you're looking down the pipe and you say, you know what? Electric vehicles, I like electricity, I like energy, I like cars. For whatever reason, let's say that's the sector you pick. I'm going to give you three names. Again, I think I am invested in all three of these already. Um, but they serve different purposes. And I think this is a great way to understand the stock market right here. So if you're into the electric vehicle sector, I like to go find the king. Who's top dog? Yo, anyone who's been trading since the pandemic began knows they have some type of relationship with Tesla. I be in and out of Tesla. Like, shoot, I go get my 30%. I get out. Some people, you know, they watch their money triple. They cashed out. Some some people didn't have an exit plan. They watch their um, hill become a valley or whatever. It's what it is. But what we can all agree on is that Elon Musk is one hell of an investor. Tesla's one hell of a company. And at least in the foreseeable future, I feel like I can make money with them. So Tesla's one of them. As a matter of fact, let me give you all three names and try to explain their differences. So for those of you who just want to go blindly invest like a madman, Tesla, Lucid, and Ford. Okay. Now, back to explaining the differences. Tesla does not give you a dividend. So for me to invest in Tesla, I have to believe that that company is going to grow from the moment I invest in it until my plan when I choose to come out. Me personally, I'm coming for 35% because like I said, today's the last day I'm celebrating my birthday. I'm 35. So in the stock market, I come for 35%. That is my plan. All right. Everybody has their own different plans, goals, aspirations. But please don't leave the Super Kev Livecast without having a plan. If I put in $100, I need to know what I want to come out of that 100 And I, I got to know before I put the 100 in what I'm willing to lose. If it's $5, $10, 50 the whole 100 It doesn't matter, but understand your risk reward ratio. So if you invest in Tesla, which would be a nice, I would consider at this point a safe investment. I, I believe they are a Fortune 500 company as of last year. So they are what we would consider a blue chip. The only difference is they do not offer a dividend. So that's a conversation for another day. I got to keep it pushing. Now, after you have your safe stock, you want, in my opinion, you want your growth stock. You want your risk stock. That's where Lucid comes in. Yo, I like what Lucid is doing. And I like what they could potentially be doing. I think they got the 500 horsepower autonomous whip don't quote me on that i don't got no receipts on that but they got some type of crazy whip that is worth you just all right it's worth it then when you start looking at the market cap i try not to get too technical on these videos but if you look at their market cap they are so far below tesla that if they were to just go up by a little bit that's going to be a lot of bit for your pockets if you understand what i'm saying so tesla would be my safe bet lucid would be my long-term you know home i'm swinging for the fences and then third level would be my dividend yielding stock of that sector, which is where Ford comes in. Ford is affordable. It's a blue chipper. I just personally being in America, I don't see Ford going anywhere anytime soon, because if I'm not mistaken, my insiders told me that Ford be making generators for the hospital. So Ford is like a government level stock. If you ask me, they're not regular. That's like some government shit. Again, I'm not certified public accountant. I just be trying to put two and two together with my math skills. And if you have a company this blue, such as Ford, <laughs> pardon the pun, you, there got to be a place on there to balance your boat with it. So I'm going to say for my EV, oh, and of course, they are working on an electric vehicle. So that's where their potential growth can come in. Because if they were acting like dinosaurs, I wouldn't rock with them. 
but the the stability of Tesla at the moment, the potential growth of Lucid, and the dividends of Ford make a nice little, you know what I mean, in your portfolio. Um, and then I got some personals, and obviously I'm taking too much time on this because we got to talk bone thugs, so let me keep it pushing. My personal favorites are McDonald's. Why? I don't even like McDonald's like that, but shout-outs to this pretty girl got me some McDonald's the other day. It was all right. Um, the fries was hot. But McDonald's, is accepting Bitcoin around the world. So now, yeah, I be working out and I be on my, yo, let's work out shit. Let's drink more water. Hold on, let me act like I got a sponsorship and shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, I ain't gonna toss this at nobody though. Shout out to my man Busy. I would do it too after I ain't fellatio with no men. But we gonna talk about that when I go live over there. But anyways, McDonald's, because of their um, association with Bitcoin, crypto, and trying to be innovative. They're always innovative, all right? Another one that's a dividend-yielding stock, and they're very safe. Nike, they, I already mentioned them because they're already in, like, Roblox or whatever them games are called. They already got Nike land within the metaverse. Nike's already virtual reality. Like, if you didn't know, just remember I told you in December of 20-whatever-the-fuck year we are in. Sony is a personal favorite of mine. I own... Um, PlayStation 4, I will get a PlayStation 5 when it becomes available and Street Fighter's there because now I buy games when, when I'm going to play them, not just to say I had them. But why do I trust Sony? Sony is where the gaming consoles are, right? Even though PC is is doing its thing, and we're going to talk about PC in a minute. As a matter of fact, Microsoft is also on my list. But Sony is where you're going to be playing your Call of Duties, your Street Fighter Mortal Kombat, and your NBA 2Ks, all right? Now, Microsoft, I don't, personally, I'm not bullish on Xbox. Ever since the Red Rings, I don't fuck with Xbox. But, Mike, and and, and <laughs> Street Fighter was exclusive to Sony. It was not on Microsoft. So, <laughs> If my favorite game is not on your console and when I bought your console, it broke on me and I was broke and you tried to make me pay $18 shipping to fix it. Yeah, nah, I ain't, I don't support Xbox. I'm, I'm the biggest gamer, you know, and I, I put Xbox in the NFL category. I don't fuck with you no more. But, oh, and because I don't mess with Xbox, I didn't mess with Microsoft as a stock. Like just personally, even though I, I, I own a PC and I have old Xboxes, I didn't like the direction of their company as a gamer. If Bill Gates was the richest company in the world at the time and they didn't want to pay to ship a, a faulty system that I paid 500 for, I was in college at the time, it was 500 for the system, 60 for the extra controller, like 50 for the HDMI wire at the time, and then the shit broke on its own, I barely played it, the shit looked brand new, and the motherfucker told me I had to pay $18 to ship it. I said, bro, y'all are the richest company in the world, and none of my other games broke, why don't y'all just send me a business tax written off box, and then ship it, ship it back, and they told me, no, I gotta pay $18 after I done spent like $700 on that company, I ain't put a penny into their company ever since fuck out of my face with that but i'm a big weed smoker now the only reason why i fuck with microsoft again is they acquired one of the marijuana companies microsoft is in the weed game y'all so i don't support microsoft computers i'm on an apple i don't fuck with their video games i play nintendo and and well, I play PlayStation at the crib, Nintendo on the road. I don't fuck with Microsoft phones. I got an Apple iPhone. So Microsoft lost everything to me. Like, I, I don't fuck with them. But damn, they bought a weed company. Shit, they trying to catch me on an emotional side, which is working because I said I was going to make this episode quick. And I'm over here talking about why Microsoft is going to be a part of the metaverse or, or whatever the fuck. So if you support Microsoft, shit. I might have to give me a share or two. Maybe I'll do that for my son. Get him a fractional share or something just to say I bought it. Anyways, keeping it pushing. Um, Activision Blizzard, I think they may call it duty. Call of Duty be out here. Um, and also, speaking about Call of Duty, what's this? Oh, shit. Yeah, niggas had to open some shit. Niggas, niggas know I be in the gym and shit. But um, Call of Duty, I don't play shooting games, but niggas play shooting games. So... They ain't going nowhere. But the cool thing about Activision Blizzard is I, I heard what happened was, don't quote me on this because I don't got my receipts, but I heard that one of the founders or 
developers, I don't know the proper term, of Activision Blizzard is behind the Shibu, Shibu, Shiba Inu. Not my fault. The Shib, Shiba Inu game, which is why I'm bullish on Shiba Inu. They're not going to tell you this on the mainstream media because they want to take your money. We'll talk about that in another episode. But niggas fuck with um, Activision Blizzard. I fuck with Shiba Inu, but we're not talking about crypto right now. But that's a part of the metaverse. All right, so those are stocks to consider. And goddamn, I said I was going to move quick. I'm only on number one. I'm the worst, nigga. All right, number two on my list says, uh, well, I could put a check there since I spoke to y'all about it. And again, it's because I didn't do this yesterday, I got to do this. And then we're going to do another episode. I'm going to make a new to-do list for today. We're going to come back and do it again. Omicron, um, I don't know how to say it, but that new COVID strand. All right, first it was COVID-19, then it was the Delta variant, now it's Omicron. Well, Omicron just helped me move money from my stocks to my crypto. How did they do that? A lot of my stocks have um, stopped out. Y'all know what that is? That's when you set a stop loss. Like, yo, for example, I'm going to tell y'all straight up. If I put $100 into a company I and it goes down to 83 bucks, I get the fuck out. Non-negotiable. And... I can actually up it to 82.50 since my birthday just passed. That's it. If it says 81, I'm out the trade. There's no, well, it might come back. Uh, fuck that shit. I made a choice. I stick with it. That's why my account looks better than a lot of niggas. But besides showing off, I'm on Cash App getting money for my son. All right? So my son's account, well, one of his accounts is on Cash App. That's the one I be posting on Thursday. And yesterday was bone day. So I posted it today. Y'all niggas got to forgive me. So. In his account, which is on Cash App, you can buy the bluest of blue chip stocks, and you can only buy Bitcoin as a crypto. That's it. But guess what? If you have nothing and you're like, yo, I'm just trying to get to the next level, Cash App is providing a lot of opportunities for the hood if you take advantage. So I simultaneously fund the stocks and the crypto. And for me, I don't know, maybe it's the way I divided my money. My stocks and my crypto account were at one point very similar. At this point, if I'm not mistaken, my crypto is double my stocks. And then my stocks stopped out. Like a few hundred dollars worth of stocks got kicked out. So then I was sitting on a few hundred in my cash app. I don't send it back to my account because this is money for that. It's all trading money. Like we don't touch that shit. We just put it right back into another tax deferred investment. Shout out to the U.S. government. We pay our taxes and shit. But because I got stopped out of those um, stocks, I had a few hundred dollars in my cash app. I was then able to invest a whole week's worth of Bitcoin while it's down um, around support. Right now, it's about 56000 Yo, mark my motherfucking goddamn words. You're not going to catch Bitcoin around 56000 for a long time, if ever again. All right, now that I have given y'all my opinion, remember, this is not financial advice. I'm just a nigga from the streets. But actually, I ain't from the streets because I grew up with a mom who take good care of me and shit. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be around the street niggas. And then I only took from the streets what I needed because I never wanted to be, end up in jail and shit. Like, I'm one of them pretty boy niggas. Like, I ain't trying to go do all of that trouble shit. You know what I'm saying? I just swear a lot. That's it. That's as bad as it get. I might take a sip or two, roll a, roll a joint. That's as bad as... that's. Come on. And then, <laughs> other than that, nigga, we cool. But um, anyways, I got distracted. Let me get back to this. Um, so because that happened on Cash App and Bitcoin was available, I'm just sharing with y'all. Yo, if you have a stock broker that also has crypto, shit. When one is down, get the other. When the other one is down, get the other. That's it. And if all you have is Bitcoin and some blue chip stocks, I'm telling you right now, I'm making it happen for my son and his mama. Y'all better be paying attention and taking notes. All right. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to get through this quick, but let's do it. Oh, watch this. Yesterday, did I drink my, my lemon water to start? Yes. Did I make my bed yesterday? Yes. Fold. We talk about it all the time. Did I do it? Yes. See, I just did three, man, quick. I like this kind of rapid pace. Um, Check the email and DM. I, t- I do that every day, every morning. I be taking a shit, and then I'm in there reading my emails. You never know what financial opportunity is in there. I told you that. 
You already know what it is. I began bartending opportunities in there as well as that your bartending license is about to expire or certification is about to expire. You got like a week and a half. So I'm about to bang that out this weekend. So shout out to the email for keeping me up to date. But there was two things yesterday that I wanted to talk about. And then we're going to check the email today and we'll talk. We'll see what we found later. But yesterday, um, well, not yesterday, Wednesday, Robinhood had some technical difficulties, which did not allow me to buy a certain stock at the price I wanted. Now, it was a day trade. And because it was a day trade, I don't take it, you know, whatever. It's like, to me, it's just a trade that didn't happen. Um, now, what we are going to do is monitor to see if they kept me out of big money. Like, if that stock go crazy, crazy, then I might have something to say to them um, because you ain't supposed to do that. But why is there technical difficulties at this time of the year? Because Robinhood is working on that crypto wallet. I know what's up, so I'm going to give them a pass on that. Just make sure I stay number 89,000 on the list and that y'all get me there early because I heard the list went to a million. So 89,000 out of a million, shit. I'm in the upper some percent, nigga. Y'all better get me in. And then if Robinhood lets me in with the crypto wallet, then I might consider sending all of my crypto to one account just so I can see one one number um, one time, even though I put them on my computer. I don't need to. But remember, <clears throat> excuse me, your any account that is attached to your social security number is collateral with the bank when it's time to go get these mortgages and credit increases and loans and shit. All right, we'll elaborate on that when it's income three. Let's keep it pushing. All right. Um, next thing in the email was Citizens Bank has started a peace of mind program. Now, if y'all have been watching me for a while, again, this is season four. If you've been watching me since season one, you know I had something to say about dinosaur banking institutions. I was like, yo, it don't make sense to stay with the dinosaur banks. They charge you service char service fee. The ATMs ain't nowhere to be found. They charge you overdraft fees. You have to keep a minimum. Just everything about those banking systems and styles is outdated. All right. Then you mess with a bank like Chime and they got the um boost overdraft protection. They got the no minimum requirements. Like you could transfer as much money as you want about that. Y'all know I got the alarms popping. But um uh where was I at? Anyways, the Chime Bank is lit. Yep, we got the light back. Chime Bank is lit. I told y'all get on Chime. I right? one of my accounts is on Chime. I don't give a fuck. I got mad accounts, honestly. And when I seen what Chime was doing, I had to get a piece for my son. So I run my son's savings on Chime. Yes, indeed. Um, so Citizens Bank sent me an email because, all right, niggas owe me money. All right, people be owing me money and shit. They ain't paying time. So my account went negative for the first time this year yesterday and shit. So I knew it was going to go negative, too, because I'm like, if, this, if, if these motherfuckers don't pay me back, I'm done. And then I'm not going to ask to borrow any more money because I've been borrowing too much money this year since the motherfucking unemployment still ain't paying, nigga. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet for once. Fuck it. I'm going to just overdraft. Now, the funny thing about overdrafting was I had a, I had a, um, what kind of, I had an insurance payment for like 18 bucks that came out my account. It's supposed to come out on the 28th of November. Them motherfuckers took the money out on December 1st. But then I had an automatic payment that came out December 1st. Them motherfuckers came out December 1st. So now the bank tried to overdraft me twice. So off the rip, why the fuck one payment take three days to clear and then the other one's direct? That, there's a problem there. But anyways, I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to just go negative and just pay that shit. Like, I'm not asking niggas right now. Like, I'm tired of asking niggas. Like, niggas know they owe me. The government know they owe me. Bitch-ass public school know they fired me for no reason. So I just said, fuck the money, y'all. I ain't stressing over it. And then, lo and behold, nigga, Citizens Bank know what's up. Niggas was like, yo, we got a peace of mind program. If you can get the money in by tomorrow, we, gonna, we ain't going to fucking overdraft you. So I'm like, yeah, I like that. Because, nigga, I just needed one day, nigga. So anyways, the, the money clearing my account. I'm back to being positive Kevin shit. And them niggas, lo and behold, sent an email. Yo, we took the... Nigga, we took that $74 off. 74 divided by two is $37 a pop, I believe. So you try to charge me 37 bucks, nigga, for going overdraft? Y'all niggas is wildin'. Meanwhile, I got a Chime account. Them niggas is begging me to go overdraft. And if I kept my boost, my boost was at like 300. They got rid of it because I don't use it. So I'm over there like, fuck what I stay with a dinosaur bank for. But guess what? If the dinosaur want to catch up to the times, Citizens Bank got a chance to keep up. All right, so... 
shit, we'll see if I stick with them for next year. But nigga, I fuck with that peace of mind shit. Because that shit gave me some peace of mind. You know what I mean? Oh, and then, that reminded me, because I know I always tell y'all, and I'm probably going to say it later, niggas got to save 10% of their check. So I do have another another savings account. But had I transferred the money, it would have had that like two or three day wait period. Nigga, I was just like, fuck that shit. I don't like when you send your own money, you got to wait the two or three days type shit. That shit just be too extra. So I was just like, fuck it. We going to just leave that money there. So niggas still got money in that bullshit account. And then niggas just hustle every night. I find money until the next bill. My next bill is due on the 4th. That makes it tomorrow. So I got to hustle this money. All right. Anyways, let's keep pushing. Um, I wrote down Indeed and and LinkedIn because I'm going to update my multiple resumes. So now when y'all catch me on there, I'm going to have a music resume. I'm going to have a um, food service resume. I'm going to have a math resume. So I'm going to keep my skills separate. All right. That way motherfuckers don't see me as an audio engineer. And then they're like, wait, I thought you was a bartender. Well, nigga, fuck it. I'm both. It depends. Grab the resume you want. All right. The future of investing. Yesterday's list was crazy. I ain't even going to waste your time with it because yesterday is over. Just wait until I post latest video with today's um, investments, which were NUGT and the other one begin with a D. I forgot. Pause. We're going to um, DVAX. All right, DVAX and NUGT, but we're going to elaborate on that later. Uh, and did I mention that my email is 50% full? We're going to clean our email for the new year. All right. In my email, I already have folders based on the seven forms of income. I organize emails by money. Like, if you're sending me an email, it's either earned income, profit income, interest income, dividend income, rental income, capital gains, or royalty income. If it's not one of those, then it definitely got to go. And my email is probably full of sent mail and MP3s because, remember, I'm an engineer, so I'm always sending people beats, fucking mixes, masters. So it's probably mad at me about that, but I have those on external hard drives. I don't need them on the email, taking them digital space, digital real estate, which digital real estate is another sector, by the way, for those of you. Yeah, I'm having too much fun. Um, Bill track and note, we already told you that um, my fucking next bill is due on the fourth. How do I know that? I read my bill note every day. I'd be like, what bill was today's date? And when's the next bill due? That's how I knew before it happened, I was going to go negative. I just sometimes, sometimes I just deal with bullshit because I don't want to stress people out. Like, everybody know I got fired on some bullshit. Everybody know, like, my car is broke right now. So if I call and be like, yo, I need some money to borrow, me borrow some money. If motherfuckers don't have it, they'll stress over trying to find it. Because a lot of people love me. Contrary to the fact I get no comments on my show. Motherfuckers really fucking love me. They just hate that I swear and say what the fuck I want. But if it was up to them, I would just not swear. I would um, be on time. And then I'd be perfect. All right. So when I need things, my my my, my niggas always fuck come through for me. So I chose to not ask. I was just like, man, fuck it. You're just gonna deal with it. All right. But me looking at my um app lets me know when the next thing is due. That's how I'm able to stay uh, stay ahead. And then I knew I was gonna get some bread on Thursday and then on Friday, cause like I said, a lot of motherfuckers be owing me and shit. So my Thursday debt got paid. The Friday one ain't, I don't see it yet, nigga. I'm about to make a phone call. But between those two, I knew I was going to be back into the positive in that in that account. So we we doing all right, halfway all right. Um, there's a credit card that was due on the second, which was yesterday, and I did pay it. But the reason why I wrote it down is I wanted to allow, I, fuck. I had a credit card that had $18 on it, $18 balance. I'm not going to tell you what the limit is, but. I don't give a fuck how long the limit is. I had an $18 balance. So I paid that off, right? So now I don't owe that credit card anymore. Next month, I'm debating. Maybe I go next month. But if I don't go, or this month, sorry, because this, this month already started. If I don't go de- in December, then we are, will swipe that credit card for January. All right? Now, let me tell you exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to go to the to most likely... Best Buy, I'm going to swipe the credit card. Now, if there's a place that, if Street Fighter is out on P5, like they like, hey, Street Fighter 5 is on PlayStation 5. Yeah, I'm going to panic, buy PlayStation 5, buy new controller, all of that shit. I'll panic. That would probably cost me $1,000 on the credit card. If it's not a PlayStation 5 event, and remember, PlayStation 5 is something I buy 
once every five years. So my nigga, I could do that. But if I don't buy a PlayStation, I'll come out with just an external hard drive for about 100 bucks. Maybe, maybe I'll force it and buy the best hard drive I could find in the store, which in I would go like 250, 300, maybe is the most 200 that they might ask. Inflation's here, maybe 300. And the reason why I mentioned the number is because if I swipe for 300 in January, I'm going to tell you exactly how I'm going to fucking pay it back. This is extremely important. So very similar to when you talk stocks, you got to remind people, hey, if you're going to buy this stock, this is when you enter, this is when you exit, this is how, how you have your set your stop loss. If you're going to swipe a credit card, please understand how to pay it back or don't enter this game. If I swipe a 300 in January, that means when the bill come in February, I'm paying back 50 per cent. That's why the amounts don't matter. It's about the percents, all right? The amounts matter relative to what you can afford. But if you follow the seven forms of income, you're not swiping beyond what you can control. So now if I swipe on an external hard drive, which I already need for the Super Kev Livecast um, raw footage, so that I come, you know, make my own little... <laughs> Busy bone documentary type type. I'm gonna invest in that hard drive regardless. But I'm gonna swipe a credit card and then pay that interest, but I'm paying the interest on a three hundred dollar balance, something I can handle. That interest is not gonna make or break me versus the or relative to the profit I should make off of that hard drive. Okay, this is business talking to you. So let me Take my nigga shit off. And let me speak to you like an intelligent young man. And let me remind you that when it comes to this credit card, it's a business. It's a game. Know the rules. Learn. Learn what the out of bounds is and stay in bounds. All right. Now, I feel like being a nigga again. Okay. Feeling better. So now. The second month, I owe about 150 plus a little bit of interest. I'm going to cut that in half. Now I owe about 75 plus interest. Again, if the numbers are a little off, come on, don't bother me. Niggas know I majored in math. You don't want to go math for math with me. So just fucking stick to the bullshit numbers for the, for the sake of discussion. So first it's 300, then it's 150, then it's 75. At this point, I'm three months in. And remember, we're trying to do this every six months. So I got three months to pay 75 bucks. Niggas might pay um, motherfucking 25, 25, 25 and call it a fucking six month. Then we rinse, repeat, do it again. All right? Y'all with that? All right, cool. Don't say I ain't trying to put y'all on the game, nigga. That's because I love y'all. All right. I don't know how I could do this quick because I talk too much. I'm the biggest hypocrite ever. But save 10% off rip. Well, going negative is why you should save 10% off rip. And, and like I said, I got the 10%, but. I didn't want to wait the three days, but anyways, um, invest 25% in Bitcoin. Not only did I do that, I invested my whole next week's money already. Why? Because Bitcoin hit a level I didn't think it was going to hit in a good way. So I loaded the boat and I'm ready for the takeoff to the moon. Niggas already know what's up. Um, bar water number two, vitamin breakfast. I did that yesterday. I didn't do that today. I, I didn't do my vitamin today. Um, get upside yesterday, did that. You already know, every time we swipe... Um, a debit or credit card at the gas station, we leave with that money, all right? We leave with that cash back. I update the prices on ways, the gas price on ways. Why? Because I look out for my fellow drivers out there in the city. You already know what it is. Boston is already BS traffic. Gas be too expensive. I update the price so y'all can make the best decision for you and your family. Let's get it. Unfollowed unfollowers. Again, somebody drop a link or DM me an uh, unfollowers app because I'm tired of people unfollowing me. They don't say they unfollow me, but then I'm still following them. I ain't your fucking bitch ass followy, like whatever you want to call it. So no, if you want to follow me, I don't follow you. Petty for petty, bro. We out here. Anyways, um, I wrote download apps via Wi-Fi. I was out and I had a lot of uh, apps that I had to update, right? But then I'm like, yo, if I update this shit while I'm out, I'm using my data. Nigga, I'm going to wait until I'm around the Wi-Fi to download that shit. Y'all motherfuckers be trying to talk about you wasted all your data. Now you got the low speed shit. Because I, I I got a conspiracy theory. This is not facts. But I think these apps just be updating for the sake of updating just to make motherfuckers use their data. 
I think they working with the internet and the phone companies. But anyways, I can't prove that. So that's just my opinion. Keeping it pushing though. I wrote line up. Yeah, I know y'all see I got I had the fresh little, you know what I'm saying, yesterday. I had to do that for the thugs. Um it, shit. Oh, it's down here, I think. Yeah. Anyways. Um, post a story before the snap. So before I was over there smoking and drinking and enjoying bone thugs, I had to go take care of my health. I had to walk to the gym and go work out. Now my left shoulder still feeling some type of way, so I wasn't able to lift as heavy. So how did I compensate? We lowered the weight, baby, and then we upped the reps. Alright, so we got the Similar amount of work, less amount of um overall weight, but the work was, it felt equivalent and my body felt good, all right? And I say that to inspire whoever's thinking about working out, don't fucking wait until January 1st and become one of them bitch ass niggas that be lying, talking about, oh, new year, new me, and then January 3rd, oh, it hurts, and then they fucking quit. Don't be one of them niggas. Come on. As a matter of fact, if you don't want to be one of them niggas, come to the gym before January 1st. So that when you make that commitment January 1st, you already got some good habits, nigga. But let, don't get me started. Because I got to save that energy for the live. For the live that we do recapping the verses. My notes went crazy. I watched it like three times already. Psh. Anyways, I'm looking forward to that. Bottle of water at the gym. Niggas did that. Motivation Thursday post meeting. Every time I leave the gym, I post. Niggas did that. Take a shower after the gym. You know, you know, you know nigga, niggas be funky in there, nigga. I'm glad they had the whole mask shit because, nigga, when I be in the gym, nigga, I be in there before the shower. So I, but then after, I wash all that shit off. I, 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 I feel kind of nasty when I take a shower before the gym and then I be using the equipment and putting my body on where they nasty ass body be at. So unless you're going to shower after, the shower before, uh, I ain't enough, nigga. But the shower, I have to be washing all that nasty shit away. And then not only did I take a shower, I washed my hair yesterday. Um, Even though I forgot the hat on today, nigga. Y'all know Bone Thugs is one of the reasons why I got long hair. There's no such thing as Bone Thugs Appreciation Day, and I don't wash my shit get fresh like they did, nigga. So we definitely did that. Um, Record the live. That's what we doing right now. Bottle of water with the live. Fuck it. Might as well be a day late. Download the live. I put a check mark there, but how can I download something that's live right now? But you you can trust that I'm going to upload this. Um, and that we'll skip those. Post a story on the snap for the static mix. It's not a check there because I still owe my mans. I owe my homie. I owe him. I ain't got no excuse, bro. I just been bullshitting. And then with the bone thug shit, I, I was just fucking up. So hopefully today... I can get that done, all right? It's not a check there, and I got to add this to my undone checklist, and I'm going to go through that shit. But I'm telling you right now, though, I ain't going to do shit until I do that live on the Bone Thugs. Man. Um, Yesterday, did I eat lunch? He sure did. Um, Did I brush my teeth yesterday? Yeah, I brushed them twice. Lolly at 9 o'clock, free Bitcoin mining app. Did that. Um, Smoke break, did that. Throwback Thursday did not do that. And I'm thinking of not posting a Throwback Thursday. I might just, because I missed it, I might just turn it into Flashback Friday. Fuck it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post a picture from yesterday where I had my Mo Thugs chain on. I put it back away, but, you know, I was rocking the Mo Thugs and shit. Had the fist. So the picture didn't come out too great, but it don't matter. People will appreciate, especially Mighty Mo Thugs. I, and I think I put this out there, like, I'm an independent artist, right? Like, I built my own studio. I mix my own shit. I master my own shit. I don't need no fucking record deal. But the only motherfuckers who could consider signing me, Mo Thug Records, nigga. Niggas know I, I fuck with Bone Thugs, nigga. But y'all got to wait to catch me on YouTube to hear my recap on the verses. We going to go there. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to finish this. Then I'm going to roll one. And y'all niggas going to meet me in my cold ass whip. See, my whip is broke. The wheels don't move like that. But the bitch still turn on, nigga. So we gonna go roll up in there. And then who was I rooting for? Nigga, don't play no fucking games. Niggas know I'm Team Bone Thugs. And I, I can sneak this in here right now because my it's a live show, so we live. Y'all gotta understand what was happening. Now, let's let's let me first come at my guys first. Busy Bone was was a little off because he was not supposed to be that that hypersensitive publicly. All right. So what they were slow dancing and and mocking him 
while they were doing their verses or while you know performing their songs. It's kind of hard to say verses and verses, whatever. So if you see Gangsta Boo, I think it was Gangsta Boo and Juicy J were doing like some slow fucking prom dance type shit. And from what I saw, and if that's what got him mad, bro, you should not have gotten mad like that. Now, as a man, you got to understand what he did. He said, I see something I don't like. Y'all are turning my performance into a joke. I don't want that. So he said something very simple, like, yo, I forgot exactly what he says, but he said it wasn't, it, yeah, he was rashing Gangsta Boo, but he said, um, he said, don't be mocking me while I'm performing on stage. And I don't think that's asking too much. Like, we're talking about legendary groups, and think about it. 3-6 knew they wasn't going to win. You, you got me talking my points before my live show, but fuck it. 3-6 knew they wasn't going to win hit for hit, talent for talent. That's why they had to do the whole showmanship. That's why they had to do the bring the stripper out. They had to bring the money out. They had to bring all of these features out. They had to, um, and then they did the, the slow dancing fucking disrespectful shit. They had to do that because if you went song for song, talent for talent, it wouldn't have been close. Just look at the intros. The way Bone sounded when they were singing and the way 3-6 sounded when they were singing. That right there told you who was more talented. But versus shows, live performances, captivating a crowd is more than just who got the hits. It's about how you can control them. So we're going to get into why I was a little disappointed as a Bone fan. But again, my standards is extremely high because they're my favorites. Now, all busy and exactly I'm about to get to that um post in a minute. While busy was asking them to respect his art and his craft, that is what busy was fighting for. Yo, don't hey yo, yo, young man, yo, young man, I'm I'm recording live. Don't yell too loud, okay? I best say that. That's my nephew. I um but they be asking me like it's a baby in the picture, so that's why I don't put him in here, like nigga, whatever. So three, three, six knew they wasn't going to beat Bone Thugs like that. So they, they knew, like, let's get under their skin. And that's okay. It's a versus. That is the point. If you've watched, at least if you watched the Dipset one, they were, they were saying some, some things. So Busy should have been more mentally prepared to, what do we call that, Um, have armor on him. He was supposed to know they was going to do that. Now, let's address what actually happened. Right, because but busy been sensitive. That sensitivity is what makes him special. That sensitivity is what makes me special. That's why I like busy the most. Well, damn, some flip a coin with him and crazy. But anyways, you'll hear me say both of them is the goats because I can't pick and I still can't pick. After last night, busy's better. Fuck it, I don't know. But um, don't don't get me talking three six too much, nigga. We gotta do this on on YouTube. But um, as he was asking for respect, Juicy J said, "Suck my private part." You asking a man to perform fellatio? Bro, that was out of pocket. But then he repeated it. Because then if you notice, Busy was trying to rash Gangsta Boo on some verbal shit. Because you know he called him ugly and shit. He was like, you ugly nigga. So, you know, he was, you know, it's verse. So you can talk shit. But then when he said, suck my dick. Wait, what? Ew. So now... That is when, now watch it over, this is what happened. He was asking for respect, and he was going to tell Gangsta Boo, probably stop dancing during my shit. He was probably going to rash her. While he was trying to rash Gangsta Boo, you heard, perform fellatio on me. Perform fellatio on me. That is when he lost it. I would have lost it too. You're not going to tell me in front of all my millions of fans to go perform fellatio. And then he, re- he doubled down on it. He repeated it. Yo, bro, I would have fought too. Now, as far as the running part, as, my bad, my bad, we got, y'all see, I be doing my pull-ups. All right, as far as Busy threw the bottle and ran, he threw the water bottle, again, inappropriate. I don't, you know, if you, in the, in the letter of the law, that could have been considered a deadly weapon or whatever. So, whatever, I get it, he should have never did that. I think that was a little overly emotional. I agree. You say, you say, you, you say perform fellatio and those are fighting words. Now, we all know these men are over 40. Some of them touching, if not over 50, they was not going to fight. At least not there. All right. 
Now, are they all real? I believe they was all real, and I, I also believe they also knew there's too much money involved to be fighting right there. If they got a real issue, they can handle it after. Now, let me show love to, to Big Flesh. Y'all know Flesh did 10 years. He was one of the first ones up there, and I think he had a moment where he was like, hold on, bro. I'm Flesh and Bone. They're waiting for me to fuck up. He didn't even throw a punch. Shout out to Flesh Bone. Look at Lay. Lay with the Afro was the first one up there with Busy. I believe he was the first. It was either Lay or Flesh, but both of them was up there quick. Flesh was the one with the, sh the jacket and the no shirt underneath showing off his prison body, whatever, showing off and shit. But um, shout out to Flesh. He's rehabbing shit. Niggas know we missed him when he was gone. And let me give you a Michael Cosmo Bone Thugs. There's Bone Thugs and then there's Bone Bros. I, I consider Bone Thugs is like when Lazy get with Wish and Crazy. But then Bone Bros is when Lazy is with Flesh and, and Busy. There's like two separate factions within the group. And Lazy is the nucleus. He's the glue that keeps them together. But when it was time to kind of fight, like, let's be real. They didn't want to fight. Busy threw a bottle. He didn't throw a punch. He was just letting them know, like, yo, stop doing that corny shit. He did step back, but they were ready to fight. I think it was 3-6 um, security that was throwing hands. But you don't throw hands at an event like that. Like, it just wasn't going to, it just was never going to be a real fight. So was Busy wrong for getting that emotional? Yes. You got to understand it's a versus and motherfuckers was trying to get under your skin. Two, they had to understand they were losing. 3-6 was bringing out their best hits and Bone wasn't even bringing out their best hits up to that moment. I'm a big Bone fan. I'm fucking telling y'all. Bone had some shit in the stash. We were supposed to talk about this outside. They got some shit in the stash. And then 3-6 was bringing out their hits. So 3-6 was like, yo, let's get under this motherfucker's skin. The only flaw in their game is he has a quote-unquote girl voice. Same girl voice that got him millions of records sold and why he's one of my favorites. That unique voice is why I bought every single Busy Bone album, including the motherfucking, I, I hope I'm back, including the documentary, including the documentary, I bought that shit. Why? Because I'm the biggest Busy Bone fan in the world. The nigga nice. And he talented. And he puts his kids on. And he be trying to get his mans paid. That everything he stands for is lit. But he crossed the line by throwing that bottle. You know what I'm saying? That little scuffle. And then if you was watching the show live, especially if you was a Bone Thug fan, it took the air out the balloon. That's what I've been writing all night. Once Busy did that, he took the air out the balloon. And when you take the air out the balloon, it was hard to re-fly high again. Because remember, Bone started off on top. Like, they, remember, they won the coin toss and they were in L.A. So they had all the advantages, right? They had the advantages. Once, and, and not only that, 3-6 knew they were losing, so they started dancing to the motherfuckers singing because they're like, yo, we lost. We can't compete, so let's just act like a clown. They had the black dude who was dancing like Freaky Zeke. They had the motherfucking, they had to do the slow dance because they, they can't fucking compete song for song, verse for verse. They just can't, and they know it. So now they got Busy Bone off of his game. Now, let me tell you what happened to the rest of the thugs. Lazy Bone is like, yo. Lay is like, yo. B is my brother. I love him. We gonna just deal with this shit. Lazy and Busy are foster brothers in real life. So that motherfucker know that nigga. And remember, Flesh and Lazy are biological brothers. And Busy is the foster brother. Them niggas grew up in the same fucking house. Lay is just like, man, let this nigga be. He'll be back. Notice, Cray and Wish was kind of like, Nigga, the show must go on type energy. They they don't give a fuck. Like, they don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know they love Busy, but they don't like Busy. And they didn't. They were ready to perform without him. So now, and I'm going I'm to say this, and I'm going to keep it pushing from the Bone Thug talk, y'all. Niggas got to pull up to my YouTube. Plus, my phone niggas is texting me and shit. So, nigga, y'all got to wait for this Bone Talk. But I'm going to end it with this. Um, Bone Thugs, when Busy came, when Busy left the stage, one of their next songs was Resurrection Paper Paper. My name, the thing gonna give me some, so my nigga, yo. Okay, you can't sing that song without Busy Bone. Now Busy's missing. Okay, now as a Bone fan, I'm taking points away from the thugs. I don't care if that song was better than 3-6's song. You perform that song without the nigga who's supposed to fucking perform it. And another thing we gonna rash him is why they didn't pick the best verses from each song. But again, we're going to address that later. I wrote all of that shit down. 
Let's get back to the list, though. Bring this energy to YouTube. Fuck it. We're going to talk over there. Um, Almost done. Almost done. Did I eat dinner yesterday? I ate like a granola bar. I called it dinner, nigga. Fuck it. Ration breakfast. You know I did. I, I keep my fucking... Do I got my tomorrow's breakfast on me already? My fault's out there. But y'all know we got tomorrow's breakfast already. That's how I be losing a little weight. I like to repeat this all the time, right? I eat a lot of fucking rice and pizza. That's going to keep me fat. So what I do to balance it out is in the morning, I eat something real small like an apple, a banana, a granola bar with my two or three bottles of water to set the day off. So that way, if I'm hungry in the afternoon and I panic, it's cool. Like I got the calories to spend. You know what I mean? Calories to burn. I think that's a better play on words. Shout out to my Spanish people. I know y'all like that calor reference. You know what I mean? Anyways, keeping it pushing. Gold chain. I was supposed to go buy a gold chain yesterday, but due to my car being broke, I ain't even go out there. So I don't know if I'm going to buy the chain, but remember, I'm supposed to invest $300 in gold this year. So, man, fuck it. I still got to buy that shit. Fuck it. But 300 in gold this year, and then next year is going to be 400 And then, remember, we expect the price of gold to hit $10,000 in the next um, whatever many years. It's at 1800 right now. So that's a 5X return. That means if I spend 300 right now, I could potentially flip that chain for 1500 later on down the line. Or more more so like my children can. So I'm setting up generational wealth income number six style. Keeping it fucking pushing. I love this show. Um, now, I got a credit card that used to give me automatic credit increases. They didn't give me one for like a year and a half. But I was so, I was so content with um, pushing five figures on that account that I never asked for an increase. That motherfuckers email me like, yo, you should ask for an increase. First off, you motherfuckers should increase my shit on your own. But yeah, I am going to ask for an increase. And I already got it written down on my on my um spreadsheet. The date says I'm supposed to ask by the 15th. You said I got to ask by the 6th. I'm asking on the 5th. What's the word? Why the 5th? Because, nigga, I don't want them niggas knowing what's up with my 2020 taxes. Y'all niggas need to wait. Let me get my 2021 shit popping. Mm. That's why we wait for the, fis- the new fiscal year. Um. But there's no check mark there because obviously it's not going to happen until January, but it's going to go on my undone checklist. And then um, yesterday, did I take a nap before the verses? Hell yeah. If I didn't, ain't no fucking way I would have made it to them late motherfuckers. This is the sixth like live show I've seen them on. All right? Five times I've seen them perform in person. One time I missed the show because the motherfuckers actually was on time. One time they were on time. Like, after, like, four times of being late, I was like, man, fuck them niggas. I'm just going to show up late. Motherfuckers was on time, so I missed them. Then, motherfucking, the next time I go to see them, they was late again. So I'm like, yeah, they back to the norm. They had a show this month, last month in Boston. They fucking canceled it. So I got, I'm going to see them again in May. Busy's probably not going to be there at this point. Fuck it. Then last night, I'm like, I know these niggas is going to be late. I saw a fly that said 8 o'clock. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to wake up at 9. Woke up at 9. Shit started at 9.30. I'm laying in the bed meditating. <sighs> Shit started at 9.30. Wait. 9.30 is when the bone thugs start smoking their weed. I know them niggas. And then they're going to send out a DJ, which is exactly what they fucking did. And then you have a pre-party as them niggas was rolling drugs in the back. And I know Crazy Bone was smoking his own strand of weed because that nigga was nowhere to be found. Except he had the nice-ass jacket. And- Crazy Bone, you got some motherfucking answering to do because you wore that hot-ass Thug Mentality 1999 jacket, multi-platinum motherfucking album, and what fucking song you perform off that shit? Don't get me fucking started. Anyways, now, my, my main topic for yesterday, and let me say this quick, get the fuck out of here so I can roll a blunt and talk Bone Thugs with y'all for real, is that if LeBron is vaccinated, how the fuck he in the fucking 15-day protocol? And... If it's not vaccinated related, then you're telling me the, the, what is it called? The variant, the Omicron, Omicron, whatever. I don't know how to say it, nigga. I don't watch the news. If the Omicron, the new Greek letter, um, if the new Greek letter it mutates so much that it doesn't matter if you're vaccinated or not, why the fuck are we bothering Kyrie Irving? Also. I have a question I'm going to leave y'all with. Last year when when Donald Trump, when they said Donald Trump had the wrong, when they violated President Trump's hyper, 
all right? When they started talking about his medical conditions publicly, all right? Yeah, something I want y'all to fucking think about. As a mandated reporter, I'm not allowed to just go around motherfucking talking about my students' medical conditions yet. Everybody knew President Trump had the Rona. And that, what is the first thing I did? I went on live and said, any nigga who got the, if the president could get the Rona, then this, this shit can't be that serious. Because if the president got the Rona and it was deadly, that would have been a war on China off rip. Again, this is not, um, officially i'm just this is just my opinion so i believe that the rona was nothing to be scared of because the president had it fast forward a year later word on the street is aaron Rodgers got it but niggas know i don't fuck with nfl ever since they did what they did to colin kaepernick so fuck them so let's keep it whatever so the next league that we can potentially talk about is the nba even though them niggas be on their shit too but it's cool they ain't do no super fuck shit so that's why i still kind of support them anyways now Fast forward a year. Someone correct me in the comments. Did Trump get announced that he had the Rona in December? Because now we got LeBron James. So after President Trump, I'd say LeBron is the biggest name in the U.S. All right? Well, it's big enough. Fucking, I ain't going to say the biggest. I just wanted to make a point. But I don't know I don't know celebrities. I don't pay attention. I only know Bone Thugs and Harmony. They're bigger than both of them niggas. But um, LeBron has the Rona. He either got the Rona, the Delta, or the um, Army. If he got the Delta or the Army, then leave Kyrie the fuck alone. If he got the Rona, then suspend that nigga for the rest of the year. That means he lied on his vaccination status. It's your boy, Super Kev. As long as I'm alive, there will be a goddamn motherfucking live. I will be on YouTube. Give me like 20 minutes. I just got to roll a bone. You can't talk bone thugs without, without rolling up. They played four weed songs last night, if I'm not mistaken. But smokers only, but smokers only, only Buddha lover. That's two. Um, Flesh and Bone did a verse to the we can get no better. And then there was a fourth one. Oh, busy. Um, Friday. How does that song go? And this is for the weed. And this is for the get a bag of dope and a car to ride. Yep. They did four weeds on, so I'm, nigga, if you ain't gonna roll up, nigga, you can't talk bone thugs, you already know what it is, I love y'all, I'm gonna catch y'all in a few minutes, nigga, it's gonna be a long day, but you're gonna have the content dropping back to back, you already know what it is, love y'all, peace, more.